So it's April of 2019, and I wanted to make a updated, concise list of the software that runs my company, Lawrence Systems. And I made this list because there's a lot of questions from old videos. I was running something else back then. So this is what I'm running now. Now, my plan is actually going to be, if we make any major changes, to make an updated video. And this will be my response video because when I can, I'll reply with the video link when people just ask that question. This comes up in the forums and comes up, of course, in the uh, contact form. What software do you run for this, for that? And I just want to send the list because it, I never reply and just satisfy that person. They want to know what else you run for this. Now, I also don't understand other companies who are secretive about it. Um, if you run the same software as me, that does not mean you do the same things as me, or even if a competitor seen my software list. I don't think I have some competitive advantage based on the software choices I made. Uh, the effectiveness is in the execution of using said software to run your business effectively. So I made a list and we're going to start with how the video got to you. <laughs> So the first software is Caden Live, Audacity, and GIMP. There's over 700 videos on my YouTube channel here, and those are the tools used for the majority of them. I think Caden Live, I edited probably over 700 of the videos with. I still like it. They're always updating uh, that software. Now, of course, that's not exactly core to the business. It's core to the YouTube channel. It's not necessarily an IT business, but I thought I'd mention it, that I'd use an open source editing workflow, and you can find a video on it. I'll leave a link below. Now let's talk about the server stack, the, the server rack in the back and things like that. Now this isn't things not run in DigitalOcean. I will throw out there that we have servers spun up in DigitalOcean. Uh, we have other stuff we manage for clients and other platforms, but stuff that we have is in DigitalOcean, such as our forums. And the forums run on Discourse, which is open, runs inside of a Docker image. Uh, I mentioned that before if you look for my Discourse video, but if you're on the forums, that is a uh, open source platform there. XCPNG is the core of what runs our stack here in our server case. Now, this is run on um, a pair of servers in a pool, as they call a resource pool. So there is the ability to just swap the VMs back and forth between each other. And a lot of the VMs I'm going to mention, the ones that we host internally, are all run on XCPNG. Now, I did previous videos on Citrix Send Server, uh, and someone had asked me about that, if we run Citrix anymore. We moved everything, including uh, clients, are all moved off of Citrix and over to XCPNG. I think I have one or two left that we need to uh, migrate over, which we have some plans in place to do, because the XCPNG platform, I really do feel is superior. I didn't take down any of my Citrix videos because they're still relevant. They're still uh, accurate uh, to the how XCPNG works. You just replace where the download link comes from because Citrix made some really poor choices, in my opinion, on licensing and way they handle things. Now, where are all those VMs stored besides running on those servers? They do have some local storage on those servers, uh, and I've done some videos about this in depth about how our uh, lab and our rack is set up. But FreeNAS is what handles some of the backend storage. Now I run both FreeNAS 11.2 and 11.1. We have two FreeNAS servers. One backs up to the other. I keep an older one for clients and consulting jobs we do where people ask me things. And a lot of times it seems like some of the consulting is with the older ones. So having a system running the older legacy version is helpful because if I have to test something, because a lot of this is very important in a lab environment to me because we get clients, can I do this or can I do that? Having the same tools here in our office, uh, both in our rack and even more of them sitting behind me. We do a lot of lab testing, experiments, and learning uh, to make sure we do this. And I even set my employees on task. This is how they learn. They'll take some of the lab things and spin it up in either in our main stack of server environment or back here to make sure they understand a product or, you know, a detail out a specialized project where a client has an unusual request. Now, PFSense, uh, you can run it virtualized. That question comes up. I do not, though. My preference is running it on hardware, especially even at home now. They release those smaller uh, boxes I really like. They, those work wonderful. But PFSense on hardware, to me, just feels better because that way if I'm ever uh, troubleshooting something going on or have to restart the stack, I don't have to wait for the internet to come back. Of course, you could go HA um, and then there's less worry about it. But I just like it being a separate piece of hardware. That's my preference. Uh, there's no little gotchas when you run it in solid hardware. I no, it does effectively run in other places, uh, but this is my preference. If you want to run it inside of virtualization, go ahead. I run it as hardware. Ubuntu Pop! OS on the desktop. So Ubuntu-based 
distributions for desktop slash workstations work really well. I switched to Ubuntu around 2008 or 9 and got rid of Windows 7. Um, I want to say I went full time in about 2012 where I absolutely didn't use Windows at all anymore. So now I have, you know, seven plus years of running nothing but that as my desktop. I do, and you may have seen videos like I did the SolarWinds one where you see it inside of Windows. I run VirtualBox and that's how I run my Windows 10, which is licensed. Uh, that's how Windows 10 works for me if I need to use it. And it's not very often, but there are certain tools that may only require Windows. So we don't really run any Windows. We have no Windows servers in the building, but we run Ubuntu desktops and I have run other desktop software before, um, but I, I kind of like the Ubuntu-based ones. I say Ubuntu-based because I'm specifically running Pop! OS. Uh, I like the polish Pop! OS puts on things. Um, so it's, it's been happy for me. It's been very, very stable, very easy to manage, and I like it. Debian servers. I really like Debian for a server operating system. You know, I, did I ever used to use Red Hat? Yeah, I started with Red Hat actually in the 90s. That's when my Linux admin days started was around 1999, 1998. I was dabbling with it and then I um, was an AIX admin in the Unix world. But then I moved over to Debian around 2002, I think. So I'm 17 years of using it. So I'm familiar with the environment. Uh, I'm comfortable with that environment. So that's what we base most of our servers on. I like it. It's lightweight. It's predictable. Um, I like apt-get, update all the things. It works really well. And most of the servers that we run, that we uh, spin things up on in XCPNG are mostly based on Debian as well. Now, free PBX is going to be an exception to Debian because we get the Sangoma spin of it. I know Asterix will run in Debian, but I like the whole Sangoma package, which is mostly open source, but it has some modules on there that are paid for if you want those, but you can download the open source version of it. I'm really happy. That's what makes your phones uh, ring. And it's been a great uh, system. Chris from Crosstalk, I have a video we co-opted. He's the one that helped me set some of that up. I'm not, I like free PBX. I can manage it, but I'm not a go-to expert in all things free PBX. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, watch Chris's channel. He's got a lot of great tutorials on setting it up. Zabbix, running in Debian. Zabbix, I've done a video on. That's how we monitor our infrastructure. No, that's not how we monitor uh, Windows infrastructure for clients. I'm using SolarWinds for that, but uh, it's a, Zabbix is a great tool for infrastructure monitoring. Uh, I say monitoring because some people say, well, is, does it do this or does it do... It's made for monitoring. Yes, you can add some more features to it, but it does um, keep an eye on all of our servers for us so I can have a dashboard and see how all of my infrastructure, internal and external, is doing. Uh, so that works really well. Uh, security, oh, um, OSEC, I know I'm not going to do a video on OSEC. Maybe I'll do a video on Wazoo because we're looking at moving to Wazoo. OSEC is very difficult. Um, I had a friend help me set some of that up, and it's it's a little bit challenging. I get it. it it's hard setting up. It's really effective for security. Uh, sometimes it's so effective it stopped me from doing things, but I was actually happy it did. I was trying to edit a table, and it even real it thought me as a threat. And uh, it's really interesting. If you dig into a little bit, if you haven't read about OSEC and Wazoo, they're really cool. Uh, there are effective at stopping uh, attacks to an extent. All security's best effort, but I will say they are a pretty good product out there if you want to check it out. I may do some videos on Wazoo if we do do a full migration to it. Wazoo's pretty cool. It's like a fork of o OSEC, but making it a little bit easier to manage. MediaWiki, we're still running. I have some videos on MediaWiki. I really like it. It's a great tool. It does our documentation management. It's very locked down. It has 2FA on it. It's only accessible internally uh, across the VPN inside of our network, and only a handful of people have access to it because it's well, documentation management, but I've done videos on this. Uh, it's still a great product for uh, managing it. It's easier than a lot of the other ones I've tried, but yes, it still has a learning curve. Yes, uh, knowing some markup language and how Wikipedia works is helpful, uh, but once you kind of templatize it, it makes it easier and effective, be able to find documentation, keep up with documentation, manage all the config files we have across many, many clients uh, when we do updates. Now, money-wise, there's two tools we use. We have KMyMoney, which is how I manage the bank accounts. We have several bank accounts, and I use a QIF file. If you're not familiar, it's a standard for inter interchange, Quicken interchange format. I don't, maybe I don't know what the acronym stands for. I know most banks offer it as a download and we bring that into KMI Money and that's how we do our accounting uh, based on actuals. I've got a video on that. It's 
hard to do a good tutorial on that because, you know, dumping all my financials and all the details out to the internet seems like a bad idea and a real security risk because if you knew exactly how much certain amounts were, you'd be able to call the bank and et cetera, et cetera, and try to pretend to be me. So it's hard to do videos on it, but that's just what we're using for ledger management. So our general ledger, profit and loss, monthly statements. Uh, I have an outside accounting firm that audits and checks all this against bank statements because uh, the IRS is a headache here in the U.S. It's best to avoid them and best to pay an accountant to do it right. But invoicing, we do with Invoice Ninja. Invoice Ninja has some ledger features, but we don't use any of them. We just use it for invoicing and quoting, uh, and it works great for that, keeping track of who owes us money, how much they owe us, and sending out invoices fast and effectively. I've got a handful of videos on it. I love it as a product. It's really great. It's actually really well written. Uh, I'm really happy with all the updates and all the features it's added from the time we started using it to a year later. And we've got right now like 22 or 23,000 invoices in it. Um, so we've used it like a lot <laughs> and it's, uh, it's still a great product. These are a couple of the proprietary pieces of software. Yes, I know there's mail servers out there. Someone's going to link about 10 different open source mail servers out there. The problem with mail servers is getting mail out just seemed to go into uh, spam systems a lot. I ran my own mail server for years. I was a mail server admin for a few companies. That was something I did early in the 2000s. In my opinion, between G Suite, G Suite and Office 365, the war is over with email. They do an effective job. Uh, they're great for business. And I don't have to spend any time trying to figure out why someone didn't get my invoice. And first you think it's an excuse, then you find out it's reality. They didn't get the invoice because you are somehow on a blacklist by forms of internet magic and then you can't contact the company that's blacklisted you because they have no easy way to contact because they're bombarded by spammers that are also contacting them. So we moved to G Suite. That's the short answer there. That's why G Suite also in terms of document management, being able to collaborate from my phone. Yes, I know there's other softwares like Nextcloud that offer this. I tried it. I don't feel as though it worked near as good as G Suite does. Um, sorry. I mean, I really like those products, but when it comes to running my business, that on critical things, sharing documents, sharing spreadsheets in real time with uh, staff that are on site and working with even remote people and working with other clients, hands down, it just works really well. Uh, making sure all of your emails get there, especially because we use G Suite as the back end to send invoices out through Invoice Ninja, works. Every time they get it, it doesn't tell them that the PDFs attached with an invoice are some type of crazy threat. It just works. And that's an important aspect for this. Uh, other proprietary software, Screen Connect. That's how we handle remote access to take control of our clients' computers. Um, it works wonderfully. Yes, it's proprietary. It's a ConnectWise product. Um, I think it's actually called ConnectWise Connect. It was called Screen Connect. We bought it way back then. We use a self-hosted version of it. Um, I'll leave links to all these in below so you can check it out. But it's good software. I've not found anything, and I've tried a handful of them open source. Uh, it's been a long time since I tried everything. So once I switched to Screen Connect, it works so well. Their license fees seem reasonable to me. Uh, I pay it every year cost of doing business, but uh, boy, does it work well. Solar Winds. I have not come close to finding an open source solution that works as well as Solar Winds for the overall. Yes, I know the updates because someone always complains they don't update well for things. Yeah, no one really does update well because Microsoft doesn't update well. So they're all dealing with the chaos that is the Microsoft Windows update system. Insert stupid meme about Windows 10 updates here. <laughs> Uh, lastly, you know, primary to our business at least is going to be Unify. No, Unify is not open source. Yes, Unify is a proprietary system that runs cameras, that runs the Unify software to find networking tools for all the Wi-Fi. We really like it. I think it's a great product. Um, we have it installed, you know, hosting it ourselves to manage clients, and we do install it for clients. I, and I bring that up because, you know, we really like it. And, uh, we do a lot of other software that's not core to our business in terms of what supports our company, but we are familiar with a lot of other proprietary products out there. Um, so, but I wanted to cover this as the software that runs our business here in April of 2019. So I can just send this as a reply when people say, do you still run this or this from some old video I did? And like I said, I'll update this video uh, if anything changes and go from there. All right, leave links below with everything and uh, continue the conversation on the forums. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you I want to throw at us. 
Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.